Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Carla and for those of you who don't know me, I make weight loss, life after weight loss, vegan food and fashion content here on YouTube and also on my Instagram, Half of Carla. Shameless plug, go follow me over there. But I get asked an awful lot about my weight loss journey and I haven't actually ever sat down and filmed a video or done a post all in one go of how I've lost weight or my weight loss story. I have lost 183 pounds since January 2020. It's now May 2021, but I lost the bulk of my weight within a year to 14 months. So I thought today what I would do is take you very back to the start and tell you my story and how I lost weight. I wanted to put a little disclaimer in here first though, because I am not a healthcare professional, so if you are looking to lose weight, I highly suggest that you seek the advice of your GP or allied healthcare professional, and please don't take my word as gospel or what I did. This is just what I did, and it's not advice necessarily for you. I'm also gonna be discussing eating disorders and calorie counting within this video, so if that's not something that you're interested in or you might find that kind of content triggering, I will not take offense if you exit now. In order to tell my story, I think it makes sense that I start from the start. And I'm not one of those people who ever had a before photograph. I never had something that I wanted to get back to because I have been overweight or obese my entire life since I was a child. I was always the largest girl and probably of the boys in my class and school. I was definitely the biggest in my friend group growing up as a teenager. I kind of even got used to being the biggest person in a room in general my whole life. As I got older, my weight started to pile on and I had so many issues with things that people might take for granted if they've never been overweight or obese. For example, I couldn't fit into a plane seat easily. I couldn't cross my legs. I was the subject of ridicule and shame for my weight in terms of medically or with insurance. And basically I've kind of suffered with it my whole life. I have tried to lose weight so, so, so many times, probably nearly every Monday morning for 20 years I've tried to lose weight, but nothing has ever stuck until now. To go back to the start of my story, I have had disordered eating since I was a young child. I remember hiding food and sweet wrappers and wrappers of food from my family from as young as the age of five. And as I developed into a teenager, my food addiction and my disordered eating developed into bulimia and eventually into binge eating disorder. And at all, all the time I had food addiction. The reason for my disordered eating and for my food addiction, which morphed into binge eating disorder and bulimia at times, was to do with shame. I did not have shame because I was fat. My fat was actually as a result of the shame that I carried around with me every day. And from cues that I picked up as a child and some things that I experienced, I basically built a wall around me to protect me from the outside world. And I also escaped the negative self-talk and life-limiting beliefs that were a 24-7 consistent narrative within my head. I would hear negative things that I would say to myself all the time. I would tell myself I was not worthy, that people didn't like me, that people were judging me. I was amazing at putting words into other people's mouths all the time, like all the time. I used food as a methodology of escaping that negative self-talk. So in order to basically numb out, a lot of people with addiction issues are trying to numb out of some feeling and that's basically exactly what I was doing. Some people choose to do it with drugs, well they don't choose, but their, their weapon of choice is drugs, alcohol, sex, gambling, and for me it was food. And I was basically trying to escape my body and I was just letting this traumatized young child 
take over and make all the decisions for myself. My binge eating disorder slash bulimia had gotten so bad that in February of when I was about 23, I just broke down. I remember really vividly watching Oscar season or the award season on E! and just crying. I was just in bits. I was drinking a lot at the time as well. Uh, the recession had hit. We, I was finished college. I couldn't get a job and I really didn't have the confidence or the self-belief to actually go and interview for anything. And I just started drinking on nights out, numbing out, and then eating excessively on my way home after those nights out. And it was really, it was a really negative self cycle. And it got to that point then in that February around award season when I just, whew, I just went, I, I need help. And I had tried to lose weight so many times that I figured, okay, then I must have a gluten intolerance. That must be why I can't lose weight. So I took myself off to the GP with the supposed guise of going and having gluten intolerance test. And I was about two minutes into my appointment when I word vomited at him that I needed help. And it literally just came out of my mouth. I couldn't hold it in anymore. I had been living with the shame, this negative self-talk, bulimia, food addiction, and kind of borderline alcoholism for the majority of my life. And I couldn't do it anymore. I was in so much pain inside that I needed help. And he told me something that I've said a lot before on my channel. I've said it before on my Instagram, but it is something that has stuck with me and I believe it is so true. And he said, as soon as you fix your head, the weight will just fall off. And just a hint of the story or a flash forward, not to spoil it, but it took another 10 years for that to actually kick in. I then embarked on my first therapeutic journey. I started working with a clinical psychologist privately until my public uh, clinical psychology kicked in. So in Ireland, you're entitled to some clinical psychology or some mental health support, but it can take a long time. It took nearly two years for my public therapy to, to kick in. I started off with C, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy with my private therapist and I moved into relationship therapy with my public therapist or clinical psychologist. And the relationship therapy helped me to understand my relationship with others and my relationship with food and how I was replacing love with food. And I was able then to overcome my binge eating disorder. I was able to have the tools that I could not overeat in binge cycles so I wouldn't sit there and have 5,000 calories in one sitting. But I still wasn't able to lose weight. Bear in mind I'm 23, 20, between 23 and 26 at this point. I still just was not able to overcome and to actually lose the weight. Even though I had done these years of therapy, it just still didn't kick in. And then I met my partner Vincent when I was 27 and we had an amazing relationship. And, but my food addiction, or which I now know is food addiction, really took over. Um, I was numbing out and there was so much pain and I was dealing with so much pain that was inside of me. I was basically consistently allowing the traumatized child within me to make all of the decisions for me, to make all of my food decisions, to make all of my relationship decisions. I was quite aggressive, not physically, but I, I was very defensive all the time. And I basically wasn't the greatest partner. I wasn't the greatest friend. I, you know, just, I, I just didn't know how to live. Something was really wrong inside me, but I wasn't sure what it was. And I was building this wall further that I was still going, this physical wall around me. And I started journaling in 2019. And journaling for me was the first time that I have ever allowed myself to get something wrong. Because before the shame would never have allowed me to get something wrong. The shame basically clouded every single thing in my life. No matter what my achievement was, I still 
it didn't matter because I was still overweight and I still needed to lose weight. So every achievement, everything, everything that was good didn't matter because I had to lose weight. And so with journaling, I had started for the first time to really just allow myself to get something wrong. It didn't matter what my handwriting looked like. It didn't matter what words I was saying or if my spelling was perfect or not, because this was for me and nobody else was going to ever read this. I was never going to show it to anybody. It was just my own thing. And something started to stir in with, within me because I was being true to myself for the first time in my entire life. I was allowing myself just to be, to not pretend to try to be perfect or to overcompensate for my weight. And from that, something happened. When I was driving down a very large motorway in July, 2019 with Vincent, we were on our way to go have a massage. We were on annual leave and a, it felt like a bus hit me from the side. It was the most overwhelming feeling I have ever had in my entire life. And just like that, I realized that that critical self voice that was going around, that shame didn't actually belong to me. That these life limiting beliefs that I have aren't true. They're actually, they're complete BS. I didn't know who I was or what I wanted, but this voice in my head wasn't me. This narrative and life limiting beliefs belonged and were manifested by cues that I picked up as a child. They were things that I had thought of from society. They were words that I had put into somebody else's mouth and to everybody around me. And thus started this snowball effect of me realizing that everything I know about myself isn't true. I don't know what I like. I don't know really who I am. And it was quite a painful experience. But I knew that therapy had worked for me in the past. So I decided I have to go and start seeking therapy for this. And in, at Halloween in 2019, I started working with a therapist who helped me with two things healing the mind and body connection, because I had always seen my body as the enemy. It was this thing that I had to carry around all the time. It wasn't this wonderful vessel for my life. It was this horrendous thing that never played ball, that didn't interact the way I wanted it to. It didn't lose weight the way I wanted it to. It didn't fit into clothes that I wanted it to. It didn't look the way I wanted it to look. It was this horrible thing. Whereas actually it's not, it's this wonderful thing that kept me alive and kept me on this earth and kept me walking around and carried me through my life. And also what my therapist helped me with was with inner child trauma and to work through that inner child and to, to do some therapy work on that. And I can tell you now that the therapy work that I did at that time was some of the most painful and overwhelming work that I've ever done on myself. It's probably the hardest thing I've ever done, but the most rewarding. And by working with my therapist, I felt as if I understood where my self-critical voice had come from. I understood that my body is not the enemy. It's, it's this wonderful thing that I have, this, I have been given this gift. And I decided that I thought I was ready finally to tackle my weight for the final time. I was ready to do this. I was in the right mental health space, which as my doctor had said years and years before that, as soon as you fix your head, the weight will just fall off. But I needed to find a program that was going to help me to do that. Now I probably could have done it by myself, but I think it would have taken me longer to develop all the different areas. I had tried everything in the past, keto, counting calories by myself. I had tried Atkins and had successfully lost nearly a hundred pounds with Atkins and put it straight back on again after I started eating carbs. I had done uh, Weight Watchers or WW. I had done Slimming World. I had done the major, uh, 
um, diet programs that were available at the time. But my sister had successfully lost 92 pounds with an Irish program called Body Slims. And I decided, even though at the start, I didn't want to believe that Body Slims was any good, I didn't want to believe that it was something that was actually going to help me, I got out of my own way and signed up for their January program. And I started on the 21st of January, 2020. And since then I have lost 183 pounds or 13 stone. But I want to tell you what it is that I actually did to help me to lose weight. And the overarching thing, no matter what program that you follow, it's that you have to be in a calorie deficit to lose weight. You have to eat less calories than your body needs to function. And therefore your body takes its calories and its energy supply from your fat stores. And that's how you start to lose weight. No matter which of any of the programs that you're doing. But what I loved about Body Slims is it focused on three legs of the stool, as they call it. The diet being calorie deficit, which is you can choose whatever diet that you want to do. It also helped you um, with the exercise and the only exercise that Body Slims required you to do was one hour walking every single day. And then also it helped with the mind. So not only was I still working with my therapist in tandem, I also had Body Slims, which was focusing on the mental aspect of weight loss. So I had these two things that were coinciding and working really well together to help me to mentally be okay to be in a calorie deficit and mentally be okay and be prepared to actually put the work in to lose weight. And that is the secret to weight loss. The secret to weight loss is consistency. Every single time that I have lost weight before or attempted to lose weight, I gave up when things got hard. Becca's battle over on Instagram has a fantastic quote, which just sums it all up. What would happen if this time you didn't quit? And honestly, I am just a woman now who had the mental capacity and the ability and the mental strength to not quit. And that's why it worked is because I was consistent the whole way through. I was in a consistent calorie deficit and I did my walking consistently every single day. It wasn't like I had a cheat day on the weekends or you have to live a little. I went for it whole hog for a year. There was a few days where, you know, like my birthday, I ate whatever I chose to, or uh, we went away on holidays in the July of 2020. And there was two days when I ate off plan, but I tried to at least eat intuitively that whole time. I also did a couple of things that were just add-ons that helped me. I am a vegan, so I eat by the abundance principle. I like to see a lot of food on my plate. It helps me to not feel like there's a lack of food, which doesn't really bother me anymore, but it was something that really helped me at the start of my journey. So by having a lot of plate, uh, food on the plate, by eating a whole food or nearly whole food plant-based diet, you tend to be able to have more foods. You get greater volume for less calories than say if you're eating meat or cheese or anything like that. So for me, I was eating big salads, huge salads, and they were filling and they were full of nutrients and they were fueling my body. And I started a mental shift in order to realize that food was actually fueling me. And I started to take away that mental reward that I thought food was giving me. Instead of thinking food is um, emotional, uh, I started to see it more as fuel. Fuel to help me get through the day, fuel to help me get out on my walks and to help me to lose weight. Fuel for mental clarity to help me to be able to work and to function best that I could on a day-to-day -day basis. I also practice intermittent fasting. So that means that I eat between the hours of 12 and 8 p.m. It is basically where you shorten your eating window. And what that helped me to do was, while it not necessarily reduced my calories or anything like that, what IF or intermittent fasting did was it helped me to learn about my biological cues for hunger and fullness or satiety. Because of years of food addiction and binge eating disorder, I really wasn't sure when I was hungry. I didn't understand what a physical 
manifestation of hunger was for me because in my mind I was constantly hungry when actually technically I was never hungry because I never allowed myself to get hungry. So by practicing intermittent fasting, I started to learn what my physical cues were for hunger and that and for being full or being satiated and that really helped me and I still practice intermittent fasting to this day and I'm still a vegan. I'm a vegan for ethical reasons but also because I follow the abundance principle and I like to have lots of food on my plate being vegan is just a happy coincidence for me. What I really liked about Body Slims and the program that that's the program that I did is that it focused not on what you were giving up, it focused on what you were gaining. So instead of seeing it as a lack or seeing this as a punishment, which is every single diet I'd ever done on my past in the past, I was punishing my body for being this thing that I had to carry around with me, for being this overweight being. I came from this weight loss journey from a place of love rather than a place of punishment. And I feel that that for me is really a shift and that really helped me to, to push on because I wasn't punishing myself anymore. I wasn't giving out or admonishing myself or living with this shame. I was actually loving myself and praising myself and, and helping me in order to do what I needed to do. And don't get me wrong, there are days when it sucked and when it was tough. But because I had built that foundation of self-love and self-appreciation and self-care, this whole weight loss journey for me was an act of self-love. It was an act of self-care. It wasn't a punishment. And that's really something that's different. So two things that are massively different or a few things that are massively different are that I healed my mental health and my inner child inner traumatized child. I came from this from a place of love and from self-care and I was consistent. I did what I needed to do every day consistently and I didn't give up when I when things got tough or when I got emotional. I kept going. I built one day on top of another when I was in a calorie deficit, when I was walking, when I was doing what I needed to do and eventually I got there. And I think it was February this year that I reached my weight loss goal. And it's so bizarre to me the day that I reached it. It was like, oh yeah, I knew I was gonna do that. There's no part of me that didn't believe that I was going to do it. I really had belief in myself for the first time in my entire life. I knew that I had the tools that I needed in order to get me to where I needed to be. And my life has changed so much in so many aspects. Consistency now has become a huge part of my life in other areas, in work, in, in my relationships. I am a much nicer person to be around. I'm not as offense, you know, I'm not as like aggressive or fighty or defensive than I used to be. I'm a much more open and relaxed and calm person. I'm still a slight stress head and I'm trying to work on that. In general, this weight loss journey has changed my entire life and changed every single aspect of my life for the better. And I want you to know that if you are like me at the start, and you know, in January, 2020, I weighed 323.8 pounds. And today I weigh between 141 and 144 pounds. Depends on the day. I, I am, I can't believe I did that. But I also know that I did that. And I'm so proud of myself. And I want you to know that you can do that too. It's about doing it one day at a time. That's it. Just getting every single day right and building those days on top of each other until you get to your goal and not quitting. It's about working on the reasons, the whys as to why you were overweight. What was causing that in the past? What was causing you to feel hurt or need to numb out with food? And to being consistent and building those days on top of each other and realizing that you are worth this. I talk a lot about showing up for yourself on my Instagram because I truly believe that we don't show up for ourselves enough. We show up for other people around us, but not for ourselves. You have to give it to yourself first so that you have something to give to others. Showing up for yourself is the best act of self-love that I believe that you can do. 
and I like to show up for myself now in so many different ways than just in with my diet and my exercise. I like to get dressed up every day. I like to take time for myself. I like to start running or try a new challenge. That's to me is showing up for myself. And you can do that too. I want you to know that. That if you are struggling right now, you can do this. I promise you, you can, because I did it. It's simple, but it's not easy. It takes a lot of work and a lot of dedication. And motivation and inspiration and all these things are fantastic, but you need that foundation for when those are gone. I no longer have to worry about things that I was worried about in the past. I no longer have the self-critical voice in my head thinking that everybody's judging me. I no longer have to worry about getting on a plane and having to ask for a seatbelt extender or worried will I fit into a ride at Disney, worried will I fit into a booth in a table, in a restaurant. I have this overwhelming sense of freedom and my life is so much, want of a better term, and excuse the pun, I feel so much lighter in here even more than I feel in my body because I don't have that going on in my head anymore. Guys, that is my weight loss journey. That is from before until now and how I lost my weight. If you have any questions, please leave, please leave them in the description box down below. I will get back to anybody and if you want any more information, I can help with that as well. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. I release new videos every Monday, Irish time, 5 p.m. And you can put a little notification bell on as well if you liked this video. So thank you so much guys and I'll be back with you next week.